Great day. My name is Ricardo. I'm here with Isaac today. Hey, uh, just let me on the show. Uh, Isaac is uh, a great person. I can't wait to work with him. Uh, and we were, we are here and delighted to have Marco Ferrari, uh, also known as Mr. Ferrari. How are you, Mr. Ferrari? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you for being here. Very, very delighted to have you today. Um, and I have to say that intro is always, always so great. I'm so happy. To, uh, to see it every time. So to start off with our first question, for anyone who doesn't know who Marco Ferrari is, mm -hmm. how would you, you know, tell people who you are and what do you work in? Um, I mean, that's a tough question, right? I think I ask myself that every day. <laughs> um, but um, I would just say that uh, I'm, a, I'm an artist uh, and, and a filmmaker. Um, and... Um, yeah, I'm, I'm someone who enjoys uh, exploring and looking at the world and, and questioning it and uh, figuring out ways of you know, expressing myself um, not, not completely within convention, so trying to see how to, how to push certain limits. Okay. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Well... Well, for starters, then, uh, what kind of art do you work in, and like, how would you describe your art? Um, well, I I work mostly in in film and video, and so I, I usually think of um, of uh, an idea, some uh, usually a, about a place. Um, so my work's very much about uh, location, and um, and I combine documentary approach. Um, with narrative. So I'll treat the location, um, the buildings, uh, the environment as characters. And, um, and so my work's very much about going to a specific place um, and finding some sort of um, tension that's there. So it's not always a negative tension. The tensions can be positive or mm -hmm. negative, but something uh, about that particular environment, uh, usually the relationship between the built and, and natural environment. And um, from there, I'll be begin with photography and, and take pictures and meet people. And, um, and then uh, usually work within uh, the, the, the location usually tells me how the, the video or film will, will go. You know, if it's a video, it's a shorter piece. And, um, and then I'll start um, coming up with ideas. Sometimes I work with uh, people of the place um, and, and as actors. And um, sometimes it's strictly me just with the camera and um, sound recording equipment and, um, and then you know, editing. But uh, from there, I'll, uh, I'll always think about how am I going to express this work because um, there's so many different possibilities now of how to project films and so the work never stops with just the, the final edit that's usually then I, I start thinking about well can I show this work in a gallery or in a museum where people can um, I can project the work on a material and so it becomes more of an object uh, an installation or do I want to show it within that location that I just uh, filmed and maybe project on the building or find some sort of um, alternative space there. So I'm always um, thinking about how I'm going to you know, ex exactly present my work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I understand that you have a background in the arts. Yeah, yeah. So um, I grew up, uh, my father's a sculptor. And, uh, and my mom's a photographer, and so I grew up always within, um, within the art world, uh, thinking about how, um, I don't know, everything seemed to have meaning in the home. <laughs> so where things were placed, um, 
and all the objects that were in, in the apartment, paintings. Uh, so that always inspired me, and, and so I, I began um, always just hanging out in my father's studio, seeing how he would work with, with wax, with uh, bronze, and, and that whole process. And, um, and that kind of led me, uh, I was all very always inspired by, by music, so um, early on in high school and college I had, uh, you know, worked, um, you know, played in, played in bands and we toured, and then that kind of led me towards film. I always kind of saw when I would write lyrics or, or songs, it was everything was very cinematic, so, and, you know, what does cinematic really mean? Um, it's just a way of visualizing um, a certain sequence of events that, to me, um, had a very strong like visual appeal, and so that kind of just led me towards film and, and you know discovering that path. I see. Yeah. Like um, growing up, um, was your dad like a like a leading like a like a leading person to admire did you admire your dad while like becoming an artist yeah yeah i think um i would always always kind of have to defend him because (laughs) he uh, worked in um public sculpture he did a lot so he would always make works uh make models but they were always ideas for public spaces so um so in chicago is uh i was very proud of him because i could go around the city and, and see something he did um and show my friends and we would like play on the sculptures and and um but then there would always be you know they were very minimal pieces or in and so people would be like ah i could do that you know and mm-hmm. so i'd have to always uh as a kid try to figure out um, how can I let my friends know or the kids, you know, um, joshing me on, on the bus, like, you know, why is it that, you know, and the fact is, is they probably could do that, could do that. Um, my father's work is very playful and, um, and it's about imagination. So, um, so yeah, I think everyone can do it. It's just having the perseverance and like the will and dedication to to believe in that you know and to believe that that's important so um so yeah i I very much admired him and and you know that kind of always you know we work together today so so that's that's always um stay with me um it's very interesting uh so your father really influenced your um later on career becoming a filmmaker yeah yeah Uh, is there any type of like in, in terms of art, are there any type of artistic movements or styles that really influenced your work later on? Like, oh, that's a great question. Um, yeah, I think. Well, in in the art world, so film is is a is a strange, um, you know, medium because in the art world, it, it's become very much part of, um, you know, what we see now. Seeing films and videos, you, if you go to the Biennale di Venezia. Um, you'll see there's some Biennales where it's strictly film and video. And um, I remember my father saying, you know, kind of being frustrated because sculpture is in, in kind of traditional ways of making um, sculpture is looked down upon now and or not treated as so contemporary. But, um, you know, so film and video is being seen as an art form, which I think is, is, a, is a positive thing. Um, but it's always in between, you know, um, there's always kind of um, and not so, such a great acceptance of, of, the, of film and video. You always have to kind of defend it in terms of why it should be uh, considered an art and not, and not just entertainment. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but regarding specific art forms, I mean, um, yeah, I think of, of a lot of, um, you know, abstract expressionism and even the surrealist movement uh, influenced me. Um, a lot of, you know, contemporary uh, movements, um, Dadaism, and, and these might not, you might not see them in my work, but they basically um, show me that, you know, that the possibilities are endless, you know, mm-hmm. in terms of, of how a work can be created and, and how you don't necessarily film is so much about production about organization and um, and I think all those qualities are important because 
it's such a it's such a type of medium that uses all different types of, of artistic expressions you know whether it's lighting um, you know wardrobe but um, the to, to not get so lost in all of these different departments and to mm -hmm. realize that you can make um, a film just like a, a painter makes a painting yep. you know so to to see it that as as simple as that um, I think is is what really kind of inspired me you know in um in a sense of place the video in sense of place mm. I remember watch I was watching it um, right before our interview today okay and I was like really liked in like how the transitioning like and, and, and I also enjoyed it more because it didn't have any music it was just the art itself yeah and it was just transitioning from each artist to each artist um, what were like there any difficulties or even similarities between each artist that you saw mm. that like combined your your way of thinking of art mm. yeah i mean that was an interesting project because the venice biennale was the uh, pavilion italian pavilion was curated by Sgarbi, um who's known more for his his um expertise in in um you know more historic uh, art movements and so he created this uh, whole um pavilion about uh, i think it was called cosa nostra something something to the play of um, of uh, art being a mafia almost mm -hmm. and almost being uh, so saturated and so he asked all the Italian cultural institutes um, in the world you know there are over 50 um, basically Italy has an institute in most major countries and um, for those institutes to contact artists uh, Italian American artists and and do a show and then create a video from that show and then that video would be shown at the Biennale mm -hmm. so it was like a wall of you know hundreds of videos so for me to to then go to each artist um, yeah I think the connection each artist was so different so my idea was just to you know create something simple give them their own space um and um, not to allow uh to not use so many edits within mm -hmm. their work so there was um, a woman who did a book uh, project so i just had her scroll through the pages um you know, my father uh, was in it as well, and so I just had him interact with the piece. Um, so each each uh, it was it was interesting project because I had to really I enjoyed it because I had to understand their artwork and then find a, a simple way to to present it within um, a larger project. So yeah, I I enjoyed it so much. Yeah. Like I was like watching it and I was like, wow, like because you can tell like how each artist like valued their like sense of themselves and mm -hmm. where they were in their in this time of in this time of their lives right and how it like really impact how their 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 self really impacted like where their surroundings and mm -hmm. where they're from and i thought it was so valuable oh wow I'm to glad, look at it i'm glad to hear that yeah uh, it was really good i i enjoyed it yeah the piece i did was on um there was a statue of garibaldi mm -hmm. Um, and um, basically, the the statue isn't there anymore. It's uh, and it was uh, one of the. Um, he's a kind of uh, he's an Italian American. Um, wanted it near his house, uh, the actual statue of Garibaldi. So he had, um, and the, this is kind of like Chicago politics. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like it's that that he got the Chicago Park District to move that statue from like a major park to near his home so wow. so it was uh it was kind of uh i just started out on uh the name garibaldi and then just pulled back and and you see that it's this huge huge lime, limestone base mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. the statue isn't there you know so <laughs> and it's a little bit about like garibaldi who's not so well known you know and yeah. and that you know there are streets named after him in italy but um he's not in some people's eyes, he's not so well respected mm -hmm, in terms mm -hmm. of helping unify the country. So, um, yeah. I see. Uh, wow. <laughs> um, so, speaking of um, artists and people you've collaborated with, are, are there any like major collaborations you've done with people that you're very proud of mm -hmm. up to this point? Yeah. Um, 
there is uh, one of my professors. So I, I went to the University of Chicago for my uh, Master of Fine Arts degree. And um, one of my favorite professors there, uh, William Popel, he, um, he was very, um, yeah, important in, in my kind of, the MFA was a way, I went there late in, in my career, just maybe five years ago. So it was a way of like relooking at my work, nice. un understanding where, where um, what I've been doing. Sometimes we get so in the habit of doing things that it's good to, to take a step back. So he, um, I worked on a project of his where he, he does a lot of different works, um, you know, painting, um, but he's a very much, he, he's known for these crawl pieces in New York. He began in the late seventies. He's a performance artist back then, and he still does performance, but he would uh, dress up. He's an African-American artist. And so he would dress up as Superman <laughs> and crawl. He crawled, I think, um, through Manhattan. Um, and so he would, we wanted to raise awareness towards all these mental institutions okay. that were being closed. And so suddenly in the late 70s yeah. in New York, he started having a lot of homeless people and uh, homeless people with, with serious problems. And so he wanted to kind of bring um, this awareness. And so I worked with him on a large scale <laughs> project in Cleveland where he had people uh, pull a uh, 10 ton truck throughout the city of Cleveland um, to raise awareness about labor and how we value labor and this was in 2013 um so it was you know dealing with the recession and and jobs and so um he asked people on how they could imagine their work uh what do they enjoy about their work and um, <coughs> and so kind of like this collective project um getting people behind an absurd idea right to pull a 10 ton truck right <laughs> but it's like if you can inspire <laughs> people to do that then you know maybe you can inspire them to to change something within their lives and and for employers to kind of look at you know how people value you know their their time and and, and activity so yeah. if you don't mind. um in speaking about like collaborations right mm -hmm. as an artist and as a filmmaker um i would <coughs> say uh is it a difficulty to maintain these professional relationships that, um, you know, help with your collaborative work? Mm. You know? Difficult to maintain them to, yeah, uh, are you saying if there are if I had, uh, any issues sometimes with yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's always, um, it's always interesting to, to work with other people and like film is, is a collaborative um, art form, you know, so, um, you know, I've never really had any major issues. Uh, I mean, there have definitely been projects where I wish, you know, it, things have could, have could have gone differently, or um, it usually has to do with like not having enough m money, <laughs> but uh, or someone doing more work than um, than others. But I think um, I think the one thing is is um, that kind of gets me is is not valuing. The project, you know, and so um, there have been some projects where where I feel like that hasn't been met, you know, and and so, um, but um, but collaboration is always an, uh, a great experience because at a, at a certain point you have to kind of really understand what's important to the work and to the final idea. Um, so even in some of my film projects where I work with actors and. Um, there, it's it's um, I try not to I don't know there are a couple of film projects where the director is not um, is being questioned you know so um, and and I that comes more from my documentary background because you know who's the director in a documentary I mean you don't have this authoritative figure yeah. you know you're you're basically I'm basically um, as a filmmaker at the um, mercy of the environment right whatever the environment gives me whatever the people um in that space give me you know that's that's how i have to um you know i'm very appreciative of that so it the project is directing mm -hmm. the work and so even working with actors um and the story and and all these things i try not to create so much of a hierarchical 
situation. You know? Right. Yeah. When you're like um, working on your documentaries, mm -hmm. are there like specific, um, like specific genres you're looking for, or like, or artists that you're looking for to 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 document? Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm very much uh, inspired by Chris Marker, mm -hmm. um, and he's um, he's a filmmaker who really was a pioneer in the the video essay form or the the film essay, and and just the ability to create a story with editing, um, and he would pull from many, many different sources, and, and he would he would shoot uh, himself as well but um, so my style isn't so much like his but I'm I look at his work and, and that kind of um, ins inspired me um, Antonioni was a narrative filmmaker uh, fiction film but also um, the way his cinematography was and how he worked with landscapes and and time um, so I, I try to like look at these um, these filmmakers and and you know see how they treated their their projects their ideas and um, you know somehow you know through osmosis it, it, it kind of trickles down to me but I don't really go out and say I'm gonna make this type of documentary and I, I kind of try to really let my imagination go from there you know? so here at AUR we have a, a film festival coming up so. yeah um, it's a horror movie film festival, okay. and everyone in the media club is very excited. Yeah. Um, as a, a first year student in university, and I, I have no idea what this is going to be like. Right. Um, <laughs> what would you say that, from a filmmaker's perspective, um, what are the benefits of a film festival? Mm -hmm. um, things where we have to collaborate and display our work. Uh, what are the benefits, and what? Uh, should I be expecting as a first year student? Yeah. So, t in terms of submitting your work and, and submitting work, my work and yeah. seeing other people. I mean, festivals, uh, you know, work like exhibitions. They are exhibitions uh, in the art world. And so, it's a way, um, it's a great way to network. It's a great way to see other people's, um, you know, approach to that. To that specific art form and and so i think it's you know first of all it gives you a sense of community and um and that's the most important thing as artists you're you're stuck in the studio um and you're working and and so you tend to get isolated and so it's a great way to to meet people and then as a as just um someone who's showing their work i think it's it's important to just uh they, they act as stepping stones you know so um you, you're showing your work to your peers, um, and then there's usually, um, you know, some established people on the jury, and uh, these are all people who love, whether it's sculpture, painting, film, they love that that medium, and so, so it's a great way to just, um, you know, keep on seeing how how you respond. But you know, I've been re rejected by many film festivals, and so it sometimes it has to do with what they're looking for programming, um, time, there's so many factors. So you should never let, you know, the submission process get you discouraged. But I think it's great that, um, you know, American University is, is doing this. And, you know, what better place to do horror films? And I think we were talking last night about uh, if there are vampire films in Rome, <laughs> on that, it would be a, a great, great setting, right? So, oh, yeah. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> so... <laughs> Yeah. Uh, well, we're running out of time now, and we're gonna have to start wrapping up. Um, I think I can I say one more question. Mm -hmm. uh, can I ask one more question? Sorry, not say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, since we are in Rome, yeah. What What would be your your like favorite sculptures or mm. monuments? Since there's so many here, and it's a yeah. lot, yeah, like, yeah. too much to to do in one day. Yeah, I mean, my favorite, uh, I guess it'd have to be um, a favorite place. Um, I, I don't know, there's something about uh, Via Giulia, uh, that road that like runs parallel to, um, along the, the Tiber. Um, and there's a fountain there that's, um, that for me, it's just uh, kind of just a beautiful, simple fountain. But just uh, walking down Via Giulia, um, 
that I think is, is would be what I would recommend a friend to go do, you know, if they had one thing to do in Rome. So I'm doing that soon. We take a minute. Okay. Well, thank you, Mr. Ferrari. All right. Thank, thank you. you so much. I appreciate it. Grazie.